It's the summer of 1833 in Brandon, Vermont, and this is Thomas Davenport. He's a blacksmith. One day, he hears about a magnet-based machine that can separate iron ore. So he travels 25 miles to Crown Point, New York to visit the Penfield and Taft Iron Works. There, Thomas witnesses the first commercially available electromagnet, so he buys from the factory for $75. Back home, he dissembles and studies its construction. Thomas forges a larger iron horseshoe. He wants to wrap it with the copper wire from the electromagnet, but he wants to maximize the number of windings. To do this, he needs to insulate the wires. But he has one problem. He only has bare wire at the blacksmith's shop. The only material that could work as insulation is silk. The only silk he has is at home. It's his wife's wedding dress. Honey, do we have some silk? Um, what do you need silk for? Uh, I need to wrap it around my iron horseshoe. Horseshoe? Just use my ditch rack. Mm, no, that's cotton. I need silk. I don't have any silk. Are you sure? I thought we had some silk maybe in the closet. What about your shirt? No, it has to be silk. The only silk we have is wedding dress, and surely you don't mean my- Are you talking about my wedding dress? Is it silk? Emily sacrifices her wedding dress. She cuts up her dress, and they wrap the wires with the strips of silk. And that is how America got its first commutator DC electric motor. Fast forward 200 years. Today, half of the electric energy made in the U.S. is consumed by electric motors. When we hear the word electric motor, many people think of the electric vehicle or EV. But even if you don't own an electric car, chances are that you already have lots of electric motors around your house. Electric motors operate in common household items like your blow dryer, toothbrush, air conditioner, washing machine, just to name a few. So how does an electric motor work? Today, we're looking at the simple DC electric motor. To understand how it works, let's talk about electromagnetism. First, let's define what an electric circuit is. So here's a device that uses electricity. Throw in a battery, add some wires, and a switch that connects and disconnects the flow of electricity to turn the device on and off. Sounds simple, right? But now, what happens when you flip the battery? It changes the direction of the current, and now it flows the opposite way. Now just hold that thought so that we can talk about magnetism. Most people understand the basics of how a permanent magnet works. Opposite poles attract, and the same poles repel. Let's suppose the first magnet is on an axle. How do we get the first magnet to spin? We simply switch out the poles of the side magnet. If we keep doing this, then the first magnet will keep spinning continuously. When an electric current flows through the wire, it generates a magnetic field. This is how we create an electromagnet. We take a piece of metal that has random magnetic domains and wrap a wire around it. Why do we coil the wire? When a current flows through a wire, the magnetic field rotates around the wire. When we coil the wire, it allows more current to flow within a smaller distance, and this increases the magnetic field. Next, we place it in a circuit. When the current flows through the wire, the magnetic domains of the metals line up. This is an electromagnet. Pretty much, it effectively has become a magnet with a north and south pole. The beauty of the electromagnet, unlike a permanent magnet, is that we can turn it on or off like any electrical device. Better yet, we can cause the electromagnet poles to switch places. Just flip the battery. This will change the direction of the current, which switches the poles. North becomes south and south becomes north. Imagine having to flip the battery constantly. There's gotta be a better way. Fortunately, we could just switch the wires to switch the polarity, but now, Suppose we replace our first spinning permanent magnet with an electromagnet. It would, of course, react to the side magnet. But let's say we keep switching the wires. Well then, you would keep switching the polarity of the electromagnet, which keeps reacting to the side magnet. And that's one way to get the electromagnet to spin continuously. But now let's kick it up a notch. We bring in another side magnet. Now the two side magnets can work together to get the electromagnet to spin. But what if we want to take it up yet another level? We can curve the side magnets. Collectively, this is called a stator because it's stationary. Also, instead of a simple metal, we can use an armature, which is a type of electromagnet. Pretty much, it's a metal loop. 
Instead of an electromagnet with two polar ends, in the armature, the poles are now flat and vertical. When we link the wires, we have a full circuit. It comes as no surprise that the electromagnet spins until the opposite poles attract. To keep the electromagnet spinning, we can keep switching the wires. But actually, switching the wires is a bit primitive and inefficient. So how do we make the system stronger and faster? We throw in a commutator. Basically, it's a ring with gaps on the opposite sides. It's connected to the armature so that it spins with the armature at the same time. And now we connect the commutator to the circuit using two brushes on its sides. The brushes have springs so they can maintain tight contact with the commutator. The beauty here is that when the commutator spins, the brushes slide along the side of the commutator. Now let's connect the wires so that the current flows. Each brush touches the opposite piece of the commutator. After they pass a gap, each brush switches to the opposite side. And this in effect, is like switching the wires. The result is that the current flows the other way, which then switches the electromagnet's polarity. And that's how the armature is able to spin continuously, as long as it's connected to the battery. So how do we up the ante? We split the commutator and add a second loop to the armature. So these commutator pieces control the first loop, and when the brushes touch these pieces, they control the second loop. Now imagine if you added even more loops to the armature. This helps the motor to spin continuously. By the way, the armature is called a rotor since it rotates. You can think of the rotor kind of like the crankshaft of a combustion engine. What if we want the rotor to spin faster? This spinning force is called torque. More torque means faster spin. To increase torque, we can do a few things. First, we can increase our electricity. In other words, a larger battery. There's another trick. We can also wrap more wire to each armature loop. This makes the electromagnet stronger and therefore spin faster. And this, ladies and gentlemen, in essence, makes up a DC electric motor. The spinning motor can be connected to gears and the energy can be converted to other movements to power household gadgets, appliances, and ultimately your electric car. And there you have it. We just learned how the electric motor converts electrical energy into mechanical energy with the use of magnets and magnetic fields. Stay tuned for our next video about another family drama, how Henry Ford was developing a gasoline car while his wife was driving an electric car. If you enjoyed my video, please like and subscribe to my channel for more car and mechanical content. Thanks and see you next time.